For the three days of WebTech, there was a focus on AI right behind me in the Water AI Theater. We're taking a different approach. We're looking at both what water can do for AI and what AI can do for water. And we've got a great partnership. WEF is a convener. We bring everybody on board. We get a great partnership this year, uh, supported mainly by Amazon. It's really going to be amazing, the center of excellence that we're launching. And even though from time to time they had a party pooper raising a weird question. If the total additional water use of AI is in total less than the largest a nation plan, in Middle East, and if that said total use can be covered with water reuse and solving non-renewable water, why do you spend three days talking about it? It sounds like business as usual, no? Who invited him? Obviously, it's concentrated in the places where data centers are being built. You can't just build one dig V cell plant and supply that entire new data centers from that one D D cell plant. We've never had customers like this before. I think it's a great question, but the reality is that water problems are global issues, but water solutions are always, always local. Three days is barely scratching the surface. We're just going to get started here, but I guarantee you this is going to be an ongoing topic for a long time to come. I think you should be a little bit patient when you have such a partnership. You can not just talk about it, but you can also fast track implementation and leading and trying to see how it goes. It would be an understatement to say that AI was just present at the show. In fact, you could see it on so many booths. And among those new use cases for AI, there was one introduced here in partnership between WEF and Global Water Intelligence. I got to have a peek view behind the scenes. So let's have a look at that. This is something that we've been working on for a long period of time. We were speaking with Ralph and uh, Ray at WEF and they got very excited about the product. This is our uh, minimum viable product that we've uh, just launched. The full scale version is coming January 2026. And this is the dashboard. So you can see some key figures from the kind of data we cover. We cover information on over a thousand utilities in the US, information on 44,000 active projects. And that represents a sector capex of around 68 billion for 2025. Now, Win is essentially a platform that connects capital improvement plans, council decisions, and also state funding applications in a way that allows you to preempt future project activity. We have our monthly roundup here for August, which is a selection of the the key headlines. And on the right here, we have the latest files that we're processing. This data that we're tracking is incredibly fragmented. It's spread across tens of thousands of different websites. AI was the, the, the last piece of the puzzle, which allows us to sort of take all that unstructured data and match it in a way that works. It's not just taking utility documents, dumping them on ChatGPT and expecting a magical output. There are lots of secrets to how we pre-process the data, how we prepare the data. I mean, if you see some of these CIP plans, they're completely horrible in terms of format. As a human, it's often very difficult to understand what's going on. So we've had to develop a lot of internal tools to get the data in the best possible shape before we even start to think about using things like AI. And we also have to use a lot of our internal GWI knowledge to categorize projects by technology and application. And then we have a mapping process. So we take a project, we take a utility decision, and we have to make sure with high confidence that we can tell a customer that this particular contract award, for example, is related to a specific project. We have around 10 steps that specifically use AI, but throughout the process, there are kind of clever tricks and trade secrets that we think give us an advantage in making sure that one, the data is accurate and it's scalable. You know, we've launched this with a thousand utilities at the moment. If tomorrow we had to scale up to 5,000 utilities, we have the infrastructure, we have the pipelines in place to make that a, a reality. Document pre-processing is the most important step. With AI, if you feed it garbage, you get garbage out. We need to verify that each input and output throughout the data pipeline is running accurately, you know, AI models hallucinate. It took about two years to set up. We started when the AI models were terrible, right? ChatGPT3 or whatever it was. Now we have fantastic models that have got cheaper and better. Give me the specific. Like Corpus Christi is delaying its desalination plan. This was a 50 million... So if you click on it, what do you If I click on this, it takes me to a very long-winded Corpus Christi Council decision about exactly oh, what okay. happened here, members' voice concerns about total project costs. You can actually find the original decision that was made. It links to the native file, provide as much information as possible, and then we also link to supplementary resources that help you better understand. You can always navigate back to the original source. What this allows you to do is get insights ahead of attenders often. We're trying to become the internet of water for the US. We want to tell people what's happening, what decisions are being made, and we want to let people position themselves for future projects. What we are trying to do is give people the best possible information 
to anticipate an RFP that might happen next week, that might happen next month. We have a list of all of the wow. contract awards that were announced here, the contract amendments, financing update. And if we click on a specific contract award, when the minutes document is released for this specific meeting, our scrapers get to work. That little icon on the minutes lines up. We try to capture as much information as possible. Using AI every day makes you realize how important humans actually are. We'll be applying AI to across all our product portfolio. AI will help us to do what we're already doing better and more efficiently and, and in more detail. But I don't think that we're such AI experts that we're gonna sort of start becoming an AI consultant. The way we want to be seen is as a sort of a, a human wrapper for AI, because I think that people have this sort of sense, they're being told that so much as possible and that makes them feel quite a lot of pressure fear of missing out we should be doing this sort of stuff but the reality is as luke was saying what i can't over stress enough is how many times you know we ran into what we thought was a complete brick wall on this and we thought this is not going to work and luke and his team did an incredible job in always you know you hit a brick wall and you tunnel under it or you go around it or you just knock the wall down the plan is certainly to have a natural language interface that sits on top of everything so people will be able to interrogate it there's no such thing as unstructured data so when our people are writing Thing. They'll have an AI agent that sits next to them, which is categorizing this. Our um, USP at GWI is, you know, we speak to people. What we, our edge in the market is that we know everyone and everyone will talk to us. Soon the AI will be able to know everything on the internet. Where we feel we add our value is putting real quality new information in through really speaking to the industry. There will be more AI interfaces, but we have to really work on how that data is, is, is handled in the back end. And that's what we have our sort of smartest people working on at the moment. We cover around a thousand utilities. That represents around 44,000 total projects that we have information from. This down. is just the start. So this is just our sort of MVP for Weplex. At the moment, it's only municipal utilities. We'll be adding investor-owned utilities in in, in Q1. The front end will bloom like, uh, you know, like wildflowers in, in the spring um, in the coming months. Because the AI is set very conservatively, you will have projects where there are no technologies referenced. You may have an advanced reuse project, but there's no technologies. That's just because the CIP or the decision did not specifically mention those technologies. What we will add is AI being able to say, we think that these uh, are relevant technologies. So if you're looking for ultra filtration projects starting in 2027 or something, the AI is set extremely conservatively. So it, it's only for exact matches. Let's run down the use case. I'm a business development representative for a supplier of Jacobs. I have a meeting with Jacobs. I enter the platform, I look at everything they've won, and then I can discuss those projects. Yes, or companies are quite excited about being able to track their competitors, I think. For them to be able to look and see, oh, this is what Jacobs won last week, this is what Stantec got, this is what, you know, Aocom got, is quite an interesting uh, use case. This is only the start of this. When does it roll out to all your customers? It's available now. People can access it immediately. Like I can access it? You can. We'll have a look. If I do a cool video, will it get included in my... <laughs> I have to check. I have to check. That's it for today. If you have a bit of time left, YouTube believes you should go watch this. See you next time.